So the, the basic statement was that the, um, the space-time invariant, the s squared or delta s squared, is going to be the same no matter which reference frame you're in. Or in other words, if you take a given reference frame and you do a, a Lorentz transformation into coordinates in a different inertial reference frame, if you compute that delta s squared in those new coordinates, you should get the same answer as you had in the last reference frame. So that's what it means to be an invariant quantity. Okay, so the proof of this here is, is actually pretty, I think it's pretty neat. And um, it's most easily done by taking our, the, sort of the, the notation that we developed last time for uh, vectors and matrices and, and whatnot, and um, just basically formalizing everything at the beginning, and then the, the writing out of the proof becomes extremely simple. So, um, and this is, this is tending a, a bit towards um, what would be considered more theoretical math, which is uh, something that if, you know, if you've only ever seen calculus and, you know, maybe a little bit of linear algebra, you might, you might just tip the iceberg on, like, actually proper theoretical math, which is an incredibly um, fascinating and rich field, but it's also not really for the faint of heart. So, um, I do encourage you, though, to take, like, a, a class on proofs or, or something, you know, a class on analysis is what they call it, real analysis or complex analysis for complex numbers, um, which that's actually great for engineering, um, especially great for engineering, so. Um, okay, so let's go through the proof of this, and we're going to set up the notation as we did last time, because that will really be kind of the, the crutches that we're going to lean on this entire proof here. Okay, um, one other crutch I'm going to make, too. I'm going to treat this as the differential element ds squared. Now, delta x squared is if you just integrate ds squared over a finite element. Um, but ds squared is, is more fundamentally the, the differential uh, space-time interval. And so we're going to treat ds squared... Um, sorry, I should say that we're going to treat a differential space-time element, delta, uh, uh, delta x squared, or dx squared, dy squared, dz squared, uh, we're going to treat, and, and then ct squared. Um, we're going to treat each space-time um, event... Uh, dx, dy, dz, cdt, as a, um, in this case we're going to treat it as a column vector, and generically I'm just going to call this dx, and the way I'm going to note it here is mu. So dx sub mu and I, th I think we uh, got to this last time, but what that means is that when there's a mu there, it means that you can run from mu equaling one to four. Or what, um, what many relativists do actually, they, they pull the CDT over to the beginning, so they go from zero, one, two, three. Um, either, way, either way, it really doesn't matter here. But whenever you see a mu there, it indicates that it's number one, it's a four vector, and again, the relevant the, the related notation that this was in 3D space is that. So I'm simply saying that it's a four vector, and now that little subscript there, if you were to write dx sub one, that would specifically be dx. And, and it's a little bit confusing here, but this is just simply the length element in the x-axis. If you were to write dx sub two, that'd just be dy, the, the second component of it. So it's exactly the same as normal vectors, except it has a fourth element. And then we're also, um, we have the... Um, the, let's see, treat the Lorentz transformation matrix, transformation, and I'm going to write this out here, but I'm going to call this, and, and I'm actually going to use a different notation as we used last time. I, I was using slightly non-standard notation, I realized, after, after class. So um, I'm going to treat this as, I'm going to call it big letter gamma. If you turn it around, it's L. So easy way to think of it, the Lorentz transformation matrix is gamma. Now gamma here, and that's capital gamma, by the way, lowercase gamma is obviously that. You can maybe kind of see the similarity. Um, they both look like R to me, but that's not... Anyway, um, so that's capital gamma, and remember, that is what we had 
written, if you recall, the, the properly notated matrix was this. We have a X, Y, Z, and T component here on the left. Or sorry, I guess that's the right-hand side. So you have an X, Y, Z, T that you're going to multiply from the right. And the exact matrix was gamma times 1 minus CT over, crap, what was it? 1 minus CT over B squared, I think. I'm going to check on that. Um, and then, so we had that down the, uh, then we had dy, or sorry, we just had 1, 1, and then down here we had gamma, and I'm sorry, here is the matrix. The cross terms came from here. We have gamma b over c squared, and that's a minus. And then we have minus gamma c, I think. Is that it? I'm off on one of those terms. Uh, so this is correct here for the t term. And then for the x term, yeah, it is just minus uh, gamma v. You're exactly right. Thank you. So we're just looking at the Lorentz transformations. Um, and so this is the term you take x times gamma, and that gets you out x prime. Uh, sorry, x times gamma minus uh, gamma times vt. So remember, x prime equals gamma times x minus vt there. And so this is what gives the minus gamma v. This is what gives the gamma x. And then same thing down there. We have the t prime equaling gamma times t minus vx over c squared. So this is what adds the minus vx uh, over c squared gamma. And this is what adds the gamma t. So we're all good here. Okay, so anyway, that's our matrix that we're now going to call capital gamma. And specifically in keeping with our notation here, um, I, I'm just going to leave it as that for now. We'll add one more step onto it in a moment. Um, and I might actually, well, yeah, okay, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. So we're going to treat that as uh, the matrix here. And then finally, we are going to treat the Minkowski metric matrix as this. And this is what we derived last time for that space-time interval. Um, remember, hopefully you can look back in your notes and see what it is. Now, the, the proper terms that I should have been using, um, I should have been calling this the, um, the matrix eta is what that is. And this matrix was a 4 by 4 only diagonal, 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So this is the, when we call it the, the metric, what that means is um, Minkowski metric matrix. This is just what we mean when we say, how do we measure distances in a, in a certain space-time? And there could, by the way, be other space-times. You could have other ones that have uh, some spatial terms that have a minus uh, signature. That would be an entirely different geometry of space-time in, in that universe that might have that sign. Um, and th there, are, there are certain combinations of signs that are and aren't possible, we think, in different universes, but I'm not going to go any further. Um, okay, so we have our uh, column vectors, and by the way, I should, I, I should actually write this out here. We're just going to write this as dx, dy, dz, and cdt. So remember, we're treating it as a column vector here. Okay, so what we want to do now is the goal... We want to show here, if, if, if the statement I gave at the beginning of this is correct, we want to show that if you take ds in the prime frame squared, or really, you don't need parentheses there, but whatever, um, that just indicates that it's in the prime frame, that should equal ds in the normal 
S frame. And remember, this is the space-time interval that we defined, and we'll write it out here in a moment, but we defined it to be dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared minus cdt squared. And the way that we're going to do this here is we are going to define ds as a combination of operators and row or column vectors. Uh, as a combination of matrix operators acting on row and column vectors. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that once we actually do the process of it. So after we've done it, come back here to see exactly what we've done. Or why we're doing it. And the second thing we're going to do is once we do that, in the, and by the way, this is in S. Uh, the next thing we're going to do here is do the same thing in S prime. So we want to get a notation for both of those on this side using only the primed coordinates, on this side using only the unprimed coordinates. And now the last thing, the, the last link, we want to use the Lorentz transformations. Now, again, we're going to be speaking entirely in symbolic notation from here on out. We're not going to be writing matrices every time we need them. Uh, we're just going to write the symbols. We're going to be, um, now what we need to do is use our operators to link up the coordinates in the unprimed frame to the prime frame. To... Um, to notate ds squared using only s coordinates, if that makes sense. So we basically want to go from the dx primes to the dx, using specifically only our um, analytical form of everything.